The house always took him by surprise, seeming to appear out of nowhere as he made the final turn along the rutted dirt track, smaller than he remembered, and set back against the tree line, an old farm worker's cottage, built of red brick and tile, with those unusually large glass windows reflecting the light. And no matter what the time of day or weather, the back of the house always overshadowed by the edge of the woods. The young couple had arrived before him. The man barely gave him time to gather up his clipboard and papers before advancing with hand outstretched. I'm Martin Cooper, and thank you for showing us round so soon. David Stainsby, he replied, as they shook hands. Uh, we'd love the house, the woman spoke up. She was slight and pale, with blonde, wispy hair. I am so sorry, Martin said. Uh, this is my wife, Penelope. Penny, please, she said. We couldn't believe our luck when we were invited for our viewing. We must have had hundreds of applicants at that rent, Martin continued. Yes, well, this is a very special property, said David. Look at this view, it's perfect. Penny was gazing at the rolling countryside beyond the overgrown frontage of the house. The fields, a perfect patchwork, stitched together by ancient hedgerows. The nearest village was barely visible in the distance the outline of its roofs and chimneys like pencil marks on the horizon. Shall we see inside? said David, trying to hurry things along. We can't wait, can we, darling? Martin took his wife's hand. The garden's a bit overgrown, I'm afraid, but the owners will pay for it to be put to rights. He fumbled for the iron key that had been weighing him down from the moment he put it in his pocket. We don't mind. I've always wanted my own garden. That was the wife again. I'd like to take care of it myself if we're accepted as tenants, of course. Good luck with that, thought David, imagining her trying to hack through the tangle of thorns and brambles which were encroaching on the path. Then he had the key in the lock and was managing to hide the tremor in his hand as he opened the front door. After you! He stepped back so that the couple had to enter before him. The door opened straight into the single living room, complete with open fireplace and full of original features, he recited, meaning the exposed beams riddled with woodworm and a hearth which always smoked. In one corner, a steep staircase led up to a short landing. This is the main bedroom. David showed them into the larger of the two upstairs rooms. The view from up here is particularly impressive, he began, but Penny was already entranced. It's so beautiful, she said, and that was the moment David knew they would take the lease. Uh, don't get carried away, darling. Stainsby's must have lots more people to show round. Martin was trying to make light of things, but it was clear how many hopes he'd invested in this place. Let me show you the kitchen. David led them back down to the living room and through to the back of the house. He fumbled for the electric light switch, although the bare bulb hanging down in the centre did little to dispel the heavy gloom. A single window was too small to let in much daylight, and almost completely overgrown. The random array of mismatched wooden cupboards and stained white sink were covered with dust and cobwebs. But Martin and Penny loved everything. This is a real chance for us, isn't it, darling? Martin turned to his wife. Penny hasn't been well, you see, and the doctor said she needed complete rest. Don't, Martin. She tried to stop him. You see, things have been going bad since I lost my job, and then we had to sell our flat. But we've turned the corner at last. I'm starting out on my own now. David doesn't want to hear all that. Penny spoke sharply, letting David see for the first time that there might be more to her than he'd thought. I'd like to know why no one in the village has moved in. There must be plenty of local people who jump at the chance to live practically rent-free. Stronger and sharper, thought David, and he had a momentary doubt that he'd underestimated her. The owner wanted to bring in some new people and raise the property values. Really? She sounded unconvinced. Uh, can we see outside? Does this door even open? Unlike the front door... This one was made of solid oak, 
strengthened with iron bands, with heavy bolts at the top and bottom. David was relieved to see the deep scratches were hidden in the gloom. <laughs> that looks like top security, laughed Martin. Just another period feature, David mumbled. We think it came from a much older building. David had a second key, which he'd wrapped in an old cloth so as not to feel it burning against his skin. As he moved his hand towards it, he felt his heart start to pound against his chest. Amazing! said Martin. How wonderful to be surrounded by all this history! I'm not so sure, said Penny. She was pulling at the tendrils of ivy, which had forced their way through the edges of the door. It's going to need a lot of work. We'll have this all cleared, David answered quickly. He could feel the sweat sticking to the back of his shirt, and knew he couldn't stay in the house one moment longer. I'm afraid you'll need to view the garden from the outside. I seem to have forgotten the key.' 